Hey everyone, Kunik here, back with another D&D horror story for you today. In this story, we have a player that's treating the game a little bit like Pokemon, but where the Pokemon are sentient NPCs and not wild animals, and as a result is coming off a little bit like a that guy. So with that all said, let's roll for initiative and begin the story. I'm playing a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons campaign my roommate Tom is DMing. It's his first time DMing, and he's knocking it out of the park. But we have one player who's kind of being a that guy. This player, James, had a rough start by making an evil character in a good aligned campaign. That character has since been written out, but it already set a bad precedent. A few sessions after James introduced his second character, the city we had called home came under siege. The party set out to save who they could during this violent attack, including a little girl about seven years old, who was crying for her mom. James's character picked the girl up and we evacuated her and a handful of other civilians into the sewer, where the Thieves' Guild was located. Here, James insists on keeping the girl around in order to protect her and train her to become a hunter. There are five other people playing this game, one of whom was absent for the session where we saved the girl. Three of the remaining four were against keeping her, myself included. The fourth was neutral on the issue. Tom also wanted to leave the girl behind. However, after having a private conversation with James, he relented and let her stay on board to the capacity of a non-speaking animal companion. According to Tom, if James wasn't allowed to keep the girl, he would have become moody and sour the experience for the whole group. This isn't the first time James has guilt-tripped Tom into letting him do something other players don't want him to do. But, getting into those other instances would be double the size of this post. This was the second time James rescued a small character. His evil one did the same thing to a goblin in order to protect it, and promptly kept it bound with ropes. It also wouldn't be the last, because in the session after the siege, James's character kidnapped a kobold in the sewer, in order to protect it. I told Tom in private that I wasn't going to let him start a collection of smalls because I don't want to be caught in a pinch and waste heals on creatures with low AC and hit points when they could be going to party members. Tom realizes I'm frustrated, but ultimately shoots me down. The next session starts, and James begins to roleplay the girl, despite Tom insisting she would behave like an animal companion. I'm already a little annoyed by this point, and later down the line, opt to free the kobold. James's character chases after it, so he can keep it with us in order to protect it. He followed that up with six words no self-aware tabletop role-playing game player likes to hear. It's what my character would do. I lose my patience because James is disregarding what we're saying to him, both in-game and out of character. I tell James outright that because we're letting him keep the girl, who was supposed to be a silent NPC, we, the players, wouldn't let him continue to build his collection of defenseless, small critters. More than half the players had said they hadn't want him to keep the girl as it was. This has continued to a point of contention for the past few weeks, and I'm doing my best to take it in stride. However, it's become pretty apparent that I'm fighting a losing battle. I apologize for such a lengthy post, but this has been burning me up for over a month now, and it's nice to get it out. I want Tom to take the rest of the player's input into account, but the DM's word is law. I also want to stress that I know there's no right way to play Dungeons & Dragons, and it's important to let everyone have their fun, but this entire situation has me wondering if I'm the jerk for being this frustrated about it. End post. I'm definitely getting Dr. Robotnik vibes from this, what with his collection of animals that Sonic is trying to save at the end of every level. But yeah, frankly speaking, a dungeon master should probably never let the player be able to take ownership of a sentient being, because that sentient being is gonna have their own wants and wills, and it's gonna really complicate a lot of the role-playing setup. And frankly, that's what the players are there for, not for the Dungeon Master to help inject RP into every situation because they have to play one of these characters. 
So a simple solution is really to just let the player have one or two animal companions that are non-speaking, like a ferret, a cat, a dog, something like that, in order to prevent it from mucking up the party composition. Anyhow, that's it for this story. As always, the source of the video is in the description below. And if you like the story and you want to see more videos just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification icon to be notified of my future videos. Now, while you wait for those future videos, here are a few related videos that you can watch in the meantime.